Have you ever finished your painting and you take a look at it and you just can't figure out what it is that is bugging you? Your drawing can be excellent, your values can be good, your mixing can be spot on, but if there's this one issue in your painting, it can throw the whole thing off. Well, it is likely that the thing that is bugging you about your painting is actually called a tangent. So today I'm gonna to talk about what tangents are and how we can avoid them in our paintings to make our work even stronger. Have you ever drawn a scene and you realize that there is a tree that looks like it's coming out of the back of their head, that a car is perfectly aligned with the edge of a building? That is called a tangent. Tangents are where two lines just touch each other in a way that causes spatial ambiguity and a slight jarring to our eyes. It's not super obvious, but it can ruin a perfectly good painting. So tangents are things that we see every day in real life, in reference photos. Here's a good example of a tangent. See how the edge of this barn lines up with the edge of this old silo? And so you can't see the edge of the barn. That right there is a tangent. So we see the barn over here, but we don't see it come out the other end of the shape. Angles and shapes can just align in a strange way that makes for a poor composition. And when this happens, it seems like it was a purposeful design by the artist, but in reality, it wasn't the intent of the artist, but it has lined up that way and created this uneasy visual feeling. The flagpole lines up with the eave of the house, which lines up with the chimney. So you have this unusual alignment. Look at the angle of this fallen tree behind this deer. It lines up perfectly with the deer's back. And again, these are things that you see in nature. They will show up in your reference photos. But as an artist, when we see things like this, we need to rearrange the scene in order to make it more visually pleasing. So here's another example. An object behind another object that appears to be growing out of what's closest to you. Like if you take a photograph and there's a plant behind somebody and it looks like the plant is growing out of them. Skimmed edge, this is a very common one. You might have a figure, their head lines up perfectly with the horizon line, or a car that lines up perfectly with the edge of a building. You need to avoid that. Either bring this edge further down or place this bird a little bit higher. Okay, here is a look at a street scene that I took a picture of. You can see how this window aligns almost perfectly with the edge of this truck. When I draw this, I'm going to have to change one of the two things. I need, I need the truck to be not lined up with that window. And another tangent that we think about when it comes to composition is, say that our reference photo was cropped like this. We don't want anything in the scene to come right up to the edge. What we would want to do in this case is we would wanna zoom it in, ensure that this is running off the page, something like that, or we would want to give that steeple more room at the top of the painting, something like that. But what we wanna avoid is a composition where that steeple is right at the edge of the painting. And this is a minor example here, but you see the figure's head is lining right up with this fence in the background. So if I was doing this composition, I would lower that fence down just a little bit, maybe to here rather than here. So the next time you're setting up your composition, look for tangents. Are there any awkward angles that are lining up? Are there any shapes that create some implied relationship or meaning to each other that you're not really wanting to have in your painting? If you can think through these things in your planning phase, then you can avoid some of these tangents showing up in your final painting. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. 
you can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.